Greetings and ABC Ministries International welcomes you all in Jesus name. Uh, in this episode Christian's Missionary Inside is featuring Sadhu Sundar Singh Indian Christian Missionary. Sundar Singh was raised a member of the Sikh religion. Prior to his conversion Sundar Singh attended a primary school run by the American Presbyterian Mission. The New Testament was read daily as a test book. Sundar Singh refused to read the Bible at the daily lessons. To some extent the teachings of the gospel and the love of God attracted me, but I still thought it was false. Though according to another testimony, Sundar Singh confessed, even then I felt the divine attractiveness and wonderful power of the Bible. In the midst of such confusion and while only 14 years old, his mother died and Sundar Singh underwent a crisis of faith. His mother was a loving, saintly woman and they were very close. In his anger, Sundar Singh burned a copy of one of the Gospels in public. Although I believed that I had done a very good deed by burning the Bible, I felt unhappy, he said. Within three days, Sundar Singh could bear his misery no longer. Late one night in December 1903, he rose from bed and prayed that God reveal himself to him if he really existed. Otherwise, I plan to throw myself in the front of the train which passed by my my house. For seven hours, Sundar Singh prayed, O oh God, if there is God, reveal thyself to me tonight. The next train was due at five o'clock in the morning. The hours passed. Suddenly, the room filled with a glow. A man appeared before him. Sundar Singh heard a voice say, How long will you deny me? I died for you. I have given my life for you. He saw the man's hands pierced by nails. Jesus was the last person Sundar Singh was looking for. After all, Jesus was the foreign god of the Christian teachers at his school. Amazed that his vision had taken the unexpected form of Jesus, Sundar Singh was convinced in his heart that Jesus was a true saviour and that he was alive. Sundar Singh fell on his knees before him and experienced an astonishing peacefulness which he had never felt before. The vision disappeared, but peace joy lingered with him. To meet Christ was the only beginning for Sundar Singh. He was sick had endured terrible persecutions in the early history. As a consequence, they were fiercely loyal to the faith and to each other. Conversion to Christianity was considered treachery. Now, every effort was made to woo or coax Sundar Singh back to his ancestral faith. Despite his family's pleas, bribes and threats, Sundar Singh wanted to be baptized in the Christian faith. After his father spoke, of words of official rejection over him, Sundar Singh became an outcast from his people. His brother Rajinder Singh attempted to poison him. He was not poisoned just once, but a number of times. People of that area threw snakes in his house, but he was rescued from the mistreatment by the help of a nearby British Christian. He cut off the hair he had worn long like every sick man. Against a great opposition, he was baptized on his birthday in 1905 in an English church in Simla. Conventional Indian churches were willing to grant him a pulpit, but the rules were foreign to his spirit. Indeed, he felt that a key reason for the gospel was not accepted. India was because it came from a garb foreign of two Indians. He decided to become a sadhu, 
so that he could dedicate himself to the Lord Jesus. He was convinced that this was the best way to introduce the gospel to his people since it was the only way which his people were accustomed to. As a sadhu, he wore a yellow robe, lived on the charity of others, abandoned all positions and maintained celibacy. In his lifestyle, he was free to devote himself to the Lord, dressed in his thin yellow robe. Sundar Singh took to the road and began a life of spreading the simple message of love and peace and rebirth through Jesus. He created no money, no other positions, only a New Testament. I'm not worthy to follow in the steps of my Lord, he said. But like him, I want no home, no positions. Like him, I will belong to the road, sharing the suffering of my people, eating with those who will give me shelter, and telling all people of the love of God. Sundar Singh journeyed much. He traveled all over India and Ceylon. Between 1918 to 1919, he visited Malaysia, Japan and China. Between 1920 to 1922, he went to Western Europe, Australia and Israel. He preached in many cities, Jerusalem, Lima, Berlin and Amsterdam, among others. Despite his growing fame, Sundar Singh retained a modest nature, desiring only to follow Jesus' example, to repay evil with kindness and to win over his enemies by love. This attitude often caused his enemies to feel ashamed of themselves and caused even his father to become a Christian later in life and to support Sundar Singh in ministry. He was quite independent of outward church authority in all his religious life though and work. He dropped off a Christian seminary that he briefly attended. Neither did he attach much importance to public worship because in his experience the heart prays better in solitude than in a congregation. He was also highly displeased with what he found when he told to the Western nations that for centuries had the benefit of the Bible and whose central figure of worship was Jesus. Sundar Singh proclaimed almost prophetic denunciations upon Western Christianity and laughed at the way the Western looked down upon religious men of the East are mere Pagans and heathens. People call us Ethans, he said in a conversation with the Archbishop of Uppsala. He travelled India and Tibet as well as the rest of the world with the message that the modern interpretation of Jesus was sadly watered down. Sundar Singh visited Tibet every summer. In 1929, he visited the country again and was never seen again. Sundar Singh's faith for all mankind. Few Christians know that Sundar Singh was not afraid to raise his voice in favor of universalism, to never deny to all non-Christians the possibility of entering to heaven. In 1925, Sundar Singh wrote, If the divine spark in the soul cannot be destroyed, and we need the despair of no sinner. Since God created men to have fellowship with himself, they cannot forever be separated from him. After all, wandering and devious paths, sinful man will at last return to him, in whose image he was created for his final destiny. In February 1929, Sundar Singh disappeared on his final missionary trip in Tibet. He was interviewed by several theology students in Kolkata, India, where he answered the questions. We have some additional quotes uh, by Sundar Singh, by Sadhu Sundar Singh. He was searching for me before I sought him. Christ, whom I had never expected, come, came to me. I was praying, if there be a God, reveal thyself. I was praying to Hindu gods and incarnations, but when he came there was no anger in his face. Even though I had burned the Bible three days before, none of you have ever destroyed the scripture like me. He is such a wonderful, loving, living Savior. 
and they covet. There's a great difference between knowing about Jesus and knowing Him. If we know, if we only know of Jesus was a good man, a great example, it is no help to us. Those who know Him know who He is. When we know Him, everything is different and we are living in a new world and new atmosphere. Heaven begins on earth for us. Those who know Him know that Jesus is everything to them. They can bear witness because they have been living with Him. If we live in Him, He will reveal Himself to us and we shall bear witness not for a day or a night only. For I, the next quote, for the first two or three years after my conversion, I used to ask for specific things. Now I ask for God, supposing there is a tree full of fruits, you will have to go and buy or pick the fruits from the owner of the tree. Every day you will would have to go for one or two fruits, but if you can make three, a tree your own property, then all the fruits will be your own. In the same way, if God is your own, then all things in heaven and all on earth will be your own because He is your Father and He is everything to you. Otherwise, you will have to go ask like a beggar for certain things. When they are used up, you will have to ask again. So ask not for gifts, but for the giver of gifts. Not for life, but for the giver of life, then life and things needed for life will be added unto you. Salt when dissolved in water may disappear, but it does not cease to exist. We can be sure of his presence by tasting the water. Likewise, the dwelling Christ to unseen will be made evident to others from the love which he imparted to us. For many years experience, I can unhesitatingly say that the cross bears those who bear the cross. While sitting on the bank of a river, one day I picked up a solid round stone from the water and broke it open. It was perfectly dry in spite of the fact that it had been immersed in water for centuries. The same true of many people in the western world, for centuries they have been surrounded by Christianity. They live immersed in the waters of its benefits, and yet it has pen not penetrated the hearts, did not love it. The fault is not Christianity but its men's heart which have been hardened by materialism and intellectualism. A newborn child has to cry for, for only in this way will his lungs expand. A doctor once told me for a child who could not breathe when, his, when it was born, in order to make it breathe, the doctor gave it a slight blow. The mother must have thought the doctor cruel, but he was really doing the kindest thing possible. As with the newborn children, things are contracted. So are the spiritual thing lungs. But through suffering God strikes us in love that our lungs expand and we can breathe and pray. May this inspirational biography of Sadhu Sundar Singh encourage you all to step in faith and embrace his love. Lord Jesus is a loving and compassionate God. Even today, if you stretch out, He is there to embrace you with love. He is there to forgive you. My dear God children, if you want to surrender your heart today, even today, God is opening his wide arms to for you God bless each one of you as you listen to this the audio mystery insight thank you for tuning with us this is Evangelist and Shushant 
با ABC News International.